Hi, I'm Sally Vancura, and welcome again to In the American Kitchen, a show where cooks like you demonstrate your recipes and the stories behind your food. And today we have two great guests, Kate Hall and John Hall. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Now, Kate is the director of the New Lenox Library, too. And John, you're going to show us fish. Yeah, yeah done. That's what I do. Okay. Years. Yes. okay, great. As Midwesterners, we just don't know how to make fish. And John's going to show us how simple it is. All right. Well, yeah, we are here in kind of one of the freshwater meccas of the world, yet we all tend to get a little landlocked and forget that Lake Superior, super deep, pure waters, Great Lakes whitefish is something that is huge to the economy in the Midwest. It um, is a fantastic tasting fish. I've got a ceviche that I can whip up, which is great for the summer. You just pop it in, whip everything up, pardon me, not just pop it in, put it in the refrigerator, forget about it, no broiler on, nothing that causes any heat, just easy to make, fun to eat, and something people are gonna like. Well, I'm excited about this. Let's get started. All right, Great. thanks. Well, Sally, what we're doing here is um, really just showing you the fish. That's kind of the key thing to do is finding a really nice, fresh piece of fish on that. So, you know, locating a reputable vendor with good standing on that, going in there and looking and making sure everything's clean and all that, kind of the obvious things that you do. Uh, outside of that, you want to look for where they get the fish. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that Saginaw Bay is not where you want to get your white fish. You're looking for deep, pure waters, maybe a little bit further north. So that matters, and your fishmonger or vendor should be able to tell you where it comes from. Particularly in the Midwest, we've got a lot of great fish local to us. Walleye is fantastic. We get a lot, you know, and it's just coming into season now. Um, white fish is something that we can get year round with it, um, which is a big part of the sort of northern economy here in the Midwest with the fishing a lot of people don't know about. Um, Marquette, Michigan, where I went to college, this was kind of my pizza, the white fish. Because you go down, pick it out, go home, and I always like to joke that fish is easier to cook than a frozen pizza, and that's because, to me, it was, or I wouldn't have bothered with it because I was lazy. Well, when I was and when I, when I first met John, I was terrified. I loved fish, but was terrified of it. And he showed me just how easy it was. Cause I, I'm a very lazy cook. Like I do not want things to be hard. And he's like, no, 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 this is not hard. And at first I was skeptical, but then after he showed me a couple of dishes, I was like, oh wow, this is ridiculously easy. And now yeah. we have fish all the time. And it's just, it's much easier to me than, as John said, tossing a frozen pizza in the oven even. Yeah. That's a great line. So you're going to show yeah. us how simple this is, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. When it comes to um, filleting a fish, this is something that uh, a lot of fish vendors markets can do for you. Um, you will probably be buying it like this, already filleted. You get it home, you forget you didn't ask to have it skinned. Don't panic. It's pretty easy to take care of that. Um, what you want to do, you know, always be safe and be aware that this right there can, can cut you. <laughs> As I've learned knife. much to my yep. misfortune. <laughs> you go to the end of the fish right there, you just kind of make a little incision with that. Now a lot of people think it's more about the cutting, really what you're doing is more separating with this. It's, um, you kind of go through with a little bit of a sawing motion and it slowly comes away. Sometimes like this fish is uh, actually being difficult, so this is a good one. A lot of times it'll just kind of fly off. But as you can see, you just have to be gentle with it. White fish sometimes will come apart like this, but that works pretty well for us with okay. the ceviche. Well, it's good to show it like this. Yep. And we pop this up and over. You know, the first time that I did it with a white fish, I thought I was doing it wrong because it kept crumbling into pieces, and I thought, oh gosh, I'm like, I'm ruining the fish. But no, John, John oh, fixed it gosh. for me. and Then you pull it out, and um, in the competitive fish skinning world, I would have lost on this one. Nonetheless, <laughs> you um, make sure and go back through, make sure some of the silver and things like that, if, you, uh, if that really bothers you, you can scrape that out. It tends not to be a big factor at all. A lot of people will do the whole fish with the skin on and not even sweat it. Okay. However, we 
tend to here in the Midwest. And uh, now a good fishmonger oh, could even skin that for you, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Skin it, good. take out pin bones, anything like that with any of the fish. White fish not a big deal. Like you said earlier employed. too, it's a good way to get used to it first. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, so then we, we just have to add a little bit of lime juice to this. Let it sit in the uh, the fridge for a couple of hours. Uh, not too hard. I kind of like to do that. And that's yeah. all it takes. Yeah. So do you cut up the fish? Nope. No other spices. If you'd like to, you can. Okay. Most certainly you can spice the taste. I intend to do that with my ceviche in the um, the rest of the batch, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay. All right. Let's put that together. All right. Well, this is the, for me, easiest part and the part that I am most capable of doing, which is once you have the fish de-skinned, hopefully by your lovely husband, although now you all know how to do it yourselves, you just take and pour some lime juice on the fish. Oops, a little lime. It's all right. Can't leave that in. Yeah. <laughs> a little lime won't hurt pour with lime little, juice. Yeah. And, and then just let it sit in the lime juice for, you know, about two hours. Um, if you want a little bit stronger flavor, you can leave it in for a bit longer, but... Um, so just enough to kind of cover the just fish? Just to kind of cover it. It's, okay. It's a seasoning for it. It's going to give it a nice fresh flavor for the ceviche. Now, John, we're working with raw fish, is that right? Yep. And you want to be careful when you're working with raw fish. Okay. Um, there are, you know, like with any food, safe handling, making sure that you're cooking it fully and all that is vital. Um, this is something different. This is something that a lot of people might look at if they haven't done it before. You know, you've got fish sitting in lime juice. How is that cooking? It's curing. It, it's a lot like um, the same thing that happens with beef jerky. Smoke curing along those lines. So okay. it's, um, it's a, you know, an alternative route. It's great for the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really nice thing to be able to whip up without on those days when you're just like, no more heat, I can't stand it. Ceviche is a great way to get your fish protein in a very healthy, quick, easy to make thing. You just use the refrigerator instead of the oven. We pop that in there for two hours. It comes out cured. We're gonna add these other ingredients and you will have a very safe, delicious appetizer or full meal if you want. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now the acid cooks it and for put, putting two hours, right? Yep, two hours in the refrigerator is good. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we're going to prepare the rest of the meal on that. Oh yeah. Okay, let's You're see. Done. I like to see a man working in the kitchen here. I know, so does she. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. So she. Yes, I do. Which, especially because I'm not allowed to be around sharp objects, John is in charge of doing all the cooking because I have a, a nasty habit of accidentally slicing myself and no matter how many times he's taught me to be safe with knives I leave the cooking to him. Yep and you know since you mentioned it on that and you're gonna be like <laughs> I've heard this a million times being safe with a knife is kind of a big deal it's kind of important that you keep them fairly sharp on it. Um, it's counterintuitive you'd think if it's sharp it can do more damage to me. The That's most knife things happen with something like this if you can my hand you'll be thinking well I'm just going to cut this this puts up a little resistance the knife slips Next thing you know, you've got a little quick trip to the emergency room for stitches, something along those lines. You can get cut gloves for your hands and you wear rubber gloves over them and you can reuse them a million times and you don't have to worry about that. Okay. It, so. And those are the ones, right, I always get this mixed up, that have the fingers chopped off, but they're really, they're protecting the other parts of your hand. So if you're holding it and you accidentally slip, it doesn't cut through, right? Right. Yeah, they have a little um, Teflon or metal in them sometimes that will just, just enough to stop the blade. Dicing up these delicious little olives. And there actually are lots of different types of knives, which I always owned one knife and used it to cut everything, whether it was appropriate or not. But um, now I realize that there are certain things, like there's a bread knife. Who knew? Yeah. Well, John did and has educated me on that, which has been wonderful. And the reasons for the knife, look how small he's getting this. I know. Yeah, I like See, to dice I get, this up. I get a little bored with it as I'm cutting and the pieces get bigger and bigger, but <laughs> yes. I guess he has more patience. So now your ingredients are the olives. Yep, olives. Okay, what I, do we have here? This is a nice show. Yeah, <laughs> olives, um, Roma tomato, okay. really on it. And there, you can get really specific with these ingredients, but um, to me, with that, I kind of, once I have a ballpark in my head, I kind of don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, these guys are turned up. You can do them a little finer, a little less. Again, how you want to cut them. 
what cut you want to use is entirely up to you. And when it comes to the herbs, the fresher the better. Absolutely, you want stuff that is great. If you can grow it yourself, that is awesome. I'm not going to use too many scallions in this. Just a few. I'll probably set them off to the side just so I've got them sort of towards the end. Now with cerveche, you like to get a little bit of a bite to it, right? Is that why the onions? Do you use any peppers or? We do use serrano peppers. I didn't have okay. enough of those to do the two runs. Uh, so I've got serrano peppers in the ceviche. Okay. And set, but we will be substituting this. Probably a little extra lemon, maybe a bell pepper or two in there. And it still comes out okay. Okay. See okay. how I am? She's like, never tastes the same twice. No, it doesn't, but it always usually tastes good. Like I said, this is a dish I've never made myself. Maybe because it was the fear of the raw fish. Oh, the ra right. Yeah, but when you How do you hear, know if it's yeah. safe? Okay. Now, is it better? I always wonder about this because I'm, like I said, a lazy cooker. And I always tend to cut things as big as humanly possible, so I have to cut as little as possible. So for this, though, it's better to cut things a little bit more fine. Right. Because you're, it's an appetizer and you're going to be... Yeah, you're going to be dipping this up dip like, um, like a salsa. All right, put these in there. Now, this is a great appetizer, but I've seen it with tacos. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's unbelievable. I've had that in restaurants, yeah. and that's why I was so excited to get this recipe down. Yeah. This I stole from um, from a guy who worked um, downtown with, we've got, so you know, in Chicago, some of the best chefs in the world, oh. absolutely working. It's a phenomenal time for food in the Chicago metro area on it. Um, but the gentleman that I've kind of lifted this from, they have a very nice restaurant in, in Oak Park. Um, and Ruben has tweaked this, you know, through the years. I saw what he did, kind of took my take on it, which mm -hmm. is it's always unique. But um, it's, it's a really, cooking is all about finding, to me, finding things that you love and bringing them together in different fun ways, sharing them with other people. And then, of course, pairing it up with a little vino or even a nice beer and kicking back and relaxing. See, Kate, that's what we're missing is the yes. wine. <laughs> all right. All right, and you just get this cut up all finely. Okay. I'm gonna use about half a batch for a bowl about that size with cilantro. It's definitely one of the big key ingredients. You know, while you're cutting that, now the fish, I'm going back to the fish. Sure. Does the fish get cut also? Or does it break apart when you're... It, it breaks apart. So it, it just, just naturally will break apart. Yeah, although it depends on what kind of fish you use. Because the white fish, in my experience, has always been more delicate. Okay. But, I mean, like, if you did a salmon ceviche, that's a lot tougher fish. Right, honey? Yeah. So, so you could use would... any kind of fish with this. Oh. This dish, right? You could use a tilapia would be good with this, mm. any of the white fish. You could use a cod, um, even a catfish with it. They're all going to bring their own flavor profile to it. Okay. But um, I kind of pick this guy because it's sort of the, if you will, like the, the cod of the Midwest and white fish is something that we can get readily and usually at pretty good prices. Well, and this is good too if you're new to fish because it's such a mild fish that whatever seasonings you put into it will, will help. I mean, if you are starting with a really fishy fish, people tend to shy away if they're not used to eating fish. But this is great because it doesn't overwhelm you with its fishiness, mm -hmm. so to speak. All right. That's what I found with tilapia too. Yes. It takes the, the flavor right. what you're putting into it. Oh, rather that's a great than point. the rather than the yes. fishiness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's um at the risk of sounding completely hokey and lame about fish, but I love it. It's like a canvas. You know, and you get your, sort of your different grades, like you'd have a canvas that's um, burlap that you're painting on, or you have something that's a sheen paper or whatever like that, and you sort of paint and get your picture with that. Fish are like that. Every one of them is a canvas, and you got all your tools with the veggies and seasonings to kind of uh, paint yourself a dinner if you look at it that way. But it's, um, it's good for you with omega-3s, which is another thing to really consider. So instead of taking fish oil, you could actually have a delicious dish. <laughs> yeah, a couple times a week, something like this that's just waiting for you. All right, that is enough cilantro, I think. Okay. All right. Onion, then we take the Roma tomato here. And you can use any 
kind of tomato or, or ingredient on that. One thing I like to tell people when they're cooking is do not be afraid to substitute and try it. Sometimes you will find your happiest and best accidents and recipes for you if you do that. Don't, if you don't have it, ask your grocer to find you a different alternative. A lot of times they can and you end up with some very pleasant surprises. Now I'm going to pull some of these little seeds out of here. Some people do this, some people don't with it. I like to for the ceviche just because I think it ends up working better. So it's not so tomatoey. Yep. And Roma tomatoes are probably the best for this then. I think so. Because yeah. they're not as juicy and not so many seeds. Yep, they're a little more firm in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I notice you didn't put salt. Is that something you put on at the end or you just don't need it because of all the juices? Oh, I'm going to salt it for okay. sure. I'm probably going to salt um, directly onto the fish after um, I strain off just a little bit of the lime juice. Okay. And what kind of salt do you usually use? I like sea salt. Sea yeah, salt? It's, not, um, it's definitely become kind of all the rage in the years. It's, uh, to me, it's a little milder on it and it gets into the fish. You know, it gets okay. into what you put it in. I'll squeeze just a couple of little lemons in here to... This is good like this. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't you want to just eat this plain? Yeah, you could stop here and just be like, great, I've got a little, I've got a little uh, summer salsa salad. You know, for somebody who's vegan, not a bad idea. Mm -mm. All right. Oh, that looks good. Nice yeah. small pieces. Very yeah. impressive. I okay, that... we got this part done. So now we're going to... We're going to kind of... Um, Bring it all together. Okay. We'll, um, take this. I'm going to strain this off really quickly and then uh, salt it. Give a little bit of seasoning on it. I tend to go a little bit of light with the pre season on that. You can always salt everything a little more afterwards. Right. It's set. And this will start to break apart. And notice I'm not worried about my cilantro fingers because this is all going to come together on it. And it's kind of a nice dish for people who don't like fish at all because you can give it to them and it's not like they can really tell there's anything in there. <laughs> How very sneaky. <laughs> a husband being sneaky? I know, I can't imagine. We'll have to try this with uh, some of our family members who don't care for fish sometime. Your brother. That's what I was just thinking. That's delicious, it's fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me get set. Quickly, I'm just going to step away from camera and strain this and I'll be back in just a sec. All right, well, Sally, now what we've done is we've got the, uh, the cured for two hours white fish as you get set. Easy. You know, I know that we're, everybody's kind of worried about breaking this up. You just go in there, squeeze it up. Break it up like that and pop in a little bit of salt. At this point, I don't like to season really heavily, but I do like to have a little bit in there. And I personally like a little pepper. Some people might not do this, but I'm going to be a rebel. <laughs> and um, I like the pepper. All right. And I think, um, do you want to? Combine these? Yes. All this is right. another easy part that I enjoy doing. <laughs> I, leave all, the, I leave all yes. the hard work to him. And so now we just put all of this together. And this is a great thing too for, for kids because they like to get their hands dirty and they like to help cook in the kitchen. This is um, actually a really great thing for them to do. They can get their hands in there, really muck about. The more they put them in, the better it is going to be. Even adults that like to get their hands dirty. Now this is great. You have the herbs, you have the juice from the lemon and the mm -hmm. lime, yeah, and the flavor. Yes. It has and, got to be. Well, and as you can see, the white fish just melts apart. So you have in all these chunks and Okay. Good to well, go. Now that we've mixed it real good, now it has to set, of course. Right. Yes. We're going to take this and just put this in the refrigerator, 20 minutes, you know, and kind of forget about it. Um, you get set, maybe open a bottle of Pinot or something like that so that you're ready to <laughs> Have go. Have a glass before you, while you wait. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we got to make that set, but in the meantime, All right. we have something for us to taste, which I always like in this show. Thank you. Thank you. So now, mm. great dig again. Tizer, you dig in. Ooh. I always dig too hard. 
Oh, I got a nice big piece of fish. Mm. All right. This tastes as good as it smells. <laughs> Isn't this perfect for summer? Sitting outside on the deck, a couple of glasses of wine. Now, what type of wine do you recommend for this? Hmm. I always recommend red because that's what I usually drink. <laughs> but a sangria. Sangria. There you go. Would be awesome. Now, this is a great appetizer. I could see sitting and talking with this. Now, what are we going to do a fish for a main course? Mm, I'm kind of tired, so I'm going to take it easy and just do a 15-minute salmon and parchment paper. We're going to wrap it up with the veggies and everything. Kind of a perfect after braving the traffic type recipe on it. And um, we'll sit down to chow in just a little bit. About 15 minutes from now, I'll grab the stuff and show you how to do that. Okay. Well, let's prepare fish and vegetables and parchment paper. Sounds Excellent. great. Okay, thank you. Okay, John, now show us how quickly we could put this together. All right, let me get set. This is a very fast operation. You've got your ceviche, but that is kind of a nice little appetizer deal, which you could do as tacos. But this with the salmon, this is a great dinner. And it is basically a dinner in a bag that is healthy, good. It's got omega-3s in it, so it'll make you smarter and help you live longer. You didn't let me eat it for a while there. I still want to find out what's up with that. No comment. All right. Like you and said, I like Kate, it's better than the pills, right? Yes, right exactly, there. exactly. All right. Put a little bit of oil in here. Not a ton. Flop your fish in. I'm going to take a little bit of salt on there. And we're going to put the skin side down on the parchment. Right. Um, so that the, the, won't the skin kind of come off a It'll, little bit on the parchment? Just almost like butter. Yeah, no, it just slides right off. You can also have it skinned though. And that's easy for a fish vendor to do. If they don't know how to skin a fish. They probably shouldn't be eating it there. <laughs> All right, just a little salt and pepper here. I um, am a big fan of tomatoes, so I always add them with everything, particularly in the summer months. It set. looks pretty already. It's set with this. I add just a little bit more oil to these, just rubbing it on with my hands, doing it sort of barbarian style. A lot of folks will have a brush for that. All right, and then I take a little bit of scallions and sprinkle them over the top here. Then a very quick next step for this that a lot of people will do is you can take um, you can take a summer seasoning like say maybe a mustard, honey mustard that you like. Take some of the really good thick German mustards that we get here in Chicago. Mix that up with a little bit of honey. Do a little drizzle over it here or offer it as a sauce afterwards. But realistically, this is it. I think that took less than that. We are going to fire up the oven now. Preheat it just like you would if you were doing the pizza at, to 350 degrees. It's that, and give it a little time to warm up, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. Some people get very, very formal with this. I tend to just do a wrap and twist. Like a Tootsie Roll? Yep, just yes. like a Tootsie Roll of salmon. <laughs> All right. Pop it onto the sheet pan. Make sure that everything's closed up because you want to get those flavors intermingling a little bit. I'll take just a little bit of oil on this outside here. Set, and that is it. We take this, pop it in the oven, and 15 minutes later, we will be eating delicious salmon. We're out of the oven now. There we go, 15 minutes later. Again, we set the oven at 350 for this. Preheat it, three or four minutes, pop this in for 15 minutes, done. And this is the end result. Veggies. Mm. Look at that, and you just plate this up. Oh, that looks wonderful. And look how juicy so that easy. is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that. Now, how do you tell if it's done? You have a look in here on it, and it should be, it's all uniform in color. If you're looking at that, 
still feels firm, so it's still got some good moisture. It flaked on just it. like that. It yep. just came off like that. Just flaked. Okay. Delicious. <laughs> Have at it. And perfect. <laughs> Here we go. First thing I hear when we get in the car is not, why didn't you hand me some salmon? <laughs> All right. Oh, I just took. Mm. There we go. And we played oh, it real right. nice. Usually we wait, but <laughs> yeah, that no. just looked wonderful. Mm. That's great. Um, it seems somehow wrong that something so ridiculously easy could be so tasty, doesn't it? Yeah, but there you go. And so, if, so if you don't know how to cook and you got a big date night coming up, a little bit of parchment paper that's going to be available in the baking section of any of the great quality local grocers. Some green beans from any of the great farmer's markets. Maybe head over and hit up the library farmer's market. Village. Village? <laughs> I tend to be library focused. <laughs> Maybe head over and head up the village farmer's market in New Lenox. Pick that up. And there you go. A quick, easy, after traffic meal that is loaded with omega-3s and will make you smarter and help you live longer. Okay. All right. <laughs> what a way to go. Thank you, John and Kate, for showing us this wonderful fish, the parchment and vegetables, mm -hmm. okay, and the cerveche. That is wonderful. But, of course, Kate, because you are yes. the director of the New Lenox Library. Yes. Okay. You did bring your books with you. I did. Um, you know, as, as I said earlier, I'm a very lazy cook. I, John is the creative one, and he'll whip things up and try different things. I'm much more of a follow the plan and, you know, go with the recipe. And so we do have a wide selection of wonderful books at the library. I brought just a few today, and because all of the ingredients we use today were very fresh and um, focused here on food that we can easily get in this area. I brought a wonderful um, cookbook that different wonderful recipes for each season mm -hmm. because of course when things are in season they taste a lot better. Um, we also have a great organic book uh, just talking about the benefits of going organic and choosing um, to have that all of the vegetables that we had today were all organic and well I think you probably tasted the difference when oh, we tried absolutely. them they just have a fresher more rich taste to them um, this book was one that I've been looking through the art of simple food and it's a it's a great book with lots of anecdotal stories so if you are like me and you love the idea of cooking but not the practical application all the time it's a great book to pick up to get you in the mood to whip something delicious up in the kitchen and of course america's test kitchen which is you know we were One talking earlier favorites. it's it's such a fabulous fabulous um, way to learn all those little tips and tricks and we have the cookbook that will give you all of those guidelines with great photos and illustrations to show you step by step for people like me who are of a more um, methodical bent but also great for ideas for people like John who are very creative um, and then finally if you're interested in finding out what those of us at the library like to eat we have a New Lenox Public Library District cookbook that the Friends of the Library put together several years ago with recipes from staff and patrons and friends. And this has some absolutely delicious, delicious recipes. You can pick these up at the library. We have them on sale and uh, get ready for some really delicious food in here as well. So while you could purchase this, these cookbooks are great, yes. even for people who cook creatively. Yes. Oh, yeah. Cookbooks are wonderful for technique. Yes. So to go and through just them. fun to look through and oh. get ideas, those beautiful illustrations. Mine never quite turn out that way, but it sure is fun to look at the pictures. And we have hundreds upon hundreds of cookbooks that you can check out at the library. Well, that's wonderful. John, Kate, thank you again for coming. And thank you for joining us at In the American Kitchen. And if you have a recipe that you'd like to demonstrate on the show, please give us a call at the station. Thank you again. <laughs>